coming down the end of the regular season, gearing up for conference tournaments and the NCAA tournament. I am joined now by the head basketball coach at Providence. 146 and 111 in his three seasons there. He led Providence to their first 20 win season since 2004. They beat Marquette in double OT last night. Providence, 20 and 10, and they're in third in the Big East. Head coach Ed Cooley joins us. Ed, it's great to have you on. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm a big fan. Listen to you, watch you all the time. So I really, really appreciate you having me Ed, on. Thank I you. appreciate you saying that, Ed. Thanks so much. It's great to have you on. So when you're battling for conference seating and a spot in the NCAA tournament, every game is big. But how big was last night's double OT win over Marquette then? It was huge. I mean, you know, uh, Marquette has had Providence's number. Uh, you know, our seniors have not beaten them. So for us to get that win, it was more a culture win for us. It was a team win, uh, organization win. And we were really, really fortunate to win on how it happened. But, you know, that's why you got to play to the last second. And that was our fourth double overtime game in league play. So uh, we've been close a bunch of times, and we're fortunate to get over the hump against a really tough Marquette team. Ed Cooley, my guest, Ed, it's amazing. It was your fourth double overtime game of the year, your sixth overtime overall for the season. What is it about this team that drama just seems to find it? Heart and soul, you know, it's just kind of our motto, and, and, and players just believe. I mean, we're really shorthanded, Jim. We're really, really shorthanded. We lost Chris Dunn, who was our starting point guard. Then we lost Brandon Austin and Rodney Bullock to a suspension for the year. They never played. So we went from a 9-10 man rotation to basically a 5-16 man rotation. One of our players hasn't been subbed all but uh, twice this season, Bryce Cott, who, is, who leads the country in minutes played. Yeah, by the way, Bryce Cotton, I'll get into this in a minute, he not only leads the country in minutes played, he's averaging more than 40 minutes a game. Near impossible to do when there's only 40 minutes in a game, but because of all the overtime games he's been there, you, know, you mentioned the loss of Chris Dunn, big-time recruit, shoulder surgery in December. You had another transfer. How have you managed to keep this team together through all the circumstances that you just mentioned where a lot of other teams might fold? You get them to believe. You get them to buy into what our mission is, and our goals have changed through the year. But, you know, let's just try to accomplish a mission. Believe in them as people, as players. Spend time with them as the leader. Empower them to believe in anything's possible. And, you know, get out there and get out there and hoop. Get out there and do your thing. <laughs> Ed Cooley joining us. All right, so on Cotton, huge game last night. Seven boards, nine assists, 25 points. He was the one who forced that jump ball that gave you a chance to hit the eventual game winner with three, or game-winning free throws, I should say, with seven seconds left. I mean, he hit that shot. These shots after playing all 50 minutes in the game, he's had a lot of big games for you. Where would that one rank? Ed. Lost yep. you, Ed. Ed Cooley joining us. Let me try one more time. Ed, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear My you. Bad. I don't know what happened. I'm in a great area, too. Yeah, no, it's probably me then. I'm not in a great area. You know, so you had this great game from Cotton. I mentioned it. Seven boards, nine assists, 25 points. He played all 50 minutes last night. He's come up big for you repeatedly. Where would you rank that performance? Right up there. I, uh, you know, as one of the best players I've coached. Uh, I've been fortunate to coach some really good players. But I'm really proud of Bryce's ascension, of where we got him. He wouldn't shoot when we first – we didn't recruit him. Uh, Keno Davis recruited him, and we appreciate Keno for doing that. Uh, he wouldn't shoot the ball to where he is right now, where he just has full command of the team. Uh, his ascension and his development has been very, very good. And, you know, he's the reason why we position ourselves for hopefully an opportunity to play in the big dance. Ed, are you in right now? I mean, you have, still have work to do, but do you feel like you've done enough to already get in the big dance? Uh, I, I don't know, honestly. I don't I don't want to sit here and lobby. And we got to earn our way in. We, we really do. Like, we have another game to play against Creighton. Have we done enough? I'm not on that committee. I, I know we've had some really tough losses. We've had some good wins. There's some great teams out there that are probably in a similar situation. If we take care of what we need to take care of and we deserve to be in there, then we'll be dancing. If we don't, opportunity is going to knock for someone else. It's the first time Providence has won 20 games in a year since 2004. And, again, the season's not over yet. You still have goals in front of you. But as somebody who's from Providence said, you grew up as a fan of the Friars. You worked extremely hard to get where you are. What does the accomplishment mean to you and the program to get back to 20 wins? means everything. I, I really appreciate Providence College giving me the opportunity to coach their program. It's a dream job for me. It's, it's a place where it's a great fit. I love the culture of the school. I love our core values. Uh, I just think it was the right hire at the right time for what Providence is trying to do. 
And let me ask you something. It's been a remarkable year year for you personally as well. You have lost more than 100 pounds since last July. Can you take me back? What was your highest weight, and when did you decide to do something about it? Well, uh, my highest weight was uh, 347 pounds. And uh, the turning point for me, I was walking upstairs, and my wife and my daughter said, Dad, you're breathing really heavy. And I had known I had needed, needed to lose them, but I, but I never would get on a scale. And I think that was a turning point for me. Uh, you know, it was like one of those dark areas where people that are, you know, are big and have tried to lose weight a lot in their life, sometimes you need some assistance. And, and I sought some assistance. And, you know, some seven and a half months later, I'm down 126 pounds. 126 now. It's amazing. So you had surgery last summer. You started the work of following up on it with a diet and with exercise. But what were the first few months like after surgery? Brutal. Uh, brutal. Uh, no energy. Um, really no energy. You're learning how to eat again is how it was for me. Uh, you know, small amounts of foods, liquid-based. Then it turned into soft consistency foods. Up to this point now, it's still you still can't consume a lot. But every day I try to run three to seven miles uh, with a weight training in between it. Uh, and every day I take time for me now. Uh, and I think it's changed my perspective. It's given my kids and my home life is better. It's the best thing I've ever done. And, you know, for people who struggle with weight, that was that was a key for me it was the habit and uh just recognizing that I needed some help. Yes, yeah, this is why I want to finish this. I think there's a lot of inspiration in this. 126 pounds, you've changed everything about your life. You know, we were talking about the weight loss and the procedure you had, and it seems to me a lot of us use food. We use food to deal with tension and stress, sure. but a lot of us don't have the kind of stress that a college basketball ha coach has, so it's completely understandable that you might turn to food. How have you managed the, the tension and the stress this season without going back to some of those old habits? I work out. I work out... Uh... I work out every single day for at least an hour and a half. I, you know, where before that hour and a half, I would give to everybody. I would do something for someone else. And right now, I have to be selfish for me and for my future and for my kids. I want to be around a little bit longer. Um, and it really has been a life changer for me. So the workouts help. I try to, again, run three to seven miles. And in between, I try to get a weight training in there every single day. All right, so Ed, what's the running been like? I mean, I've been told that a year or two ago, or if I told you a year or two ago that you'd be a runner, what would your reaction have been, and what's it like running? I would have told you I had a better chance at being an astronaut. <laughs> uh, it's been amazing. It gives you space. It allows you to think. It's just you, the ground, your sneakers, your music, and uh, it gives you space away from people. It helps me manage my day. Uh, my wife and I get into the gym probably two or three times a week, so it's some time spent there together. It's, it, I never thought I would be a runner. And now I'm addicted. I can't wait to run tomorrow because I already got a run in today. Ed Cooley joining us. And one of the things, Ed, you've talked about is that you've asked your players to help you and to push you. What do you mean by that and how have they done it? Uh, I think the power of belief and, and giving them a vision and, and giving them a purpose. You know, try to do something that a lot of, you know, on November 1st, I thought we were a really good basketball team. I think we're a better team now because our guys are totally bought in and they do feel like they're playing for something. Now, and you've talked about what it means to be a part of the program, to have success in the program. Take me back further. You grew up in a very, very tough part of Providence. You were a fan of Providence. What was it like growing up, and then what's it mean now to be right there in the middle of it? Jim, sometimes I pinch myself. I'm so humbled and so honored to be here. I, re I used to sneak into the back then the, the Providence Civic Center when Rick Pitino was the coach here and when uh, Mulaney was in his last year here. I used to sneak into the Alumni Hall. So for me to be the head coach here, it truly is an incredible opportunity. And, and it's a story where no matter what your background is, if you have an opportunity and you take advantage of them and you do the right things, you can find yourself in incredible places. And that's where I'm at because Providence and I are great fit. And what was it like when Patino took Providence to the Final Four? And what an amazing concept that is. What was he like then and what was that time like? Amazing. Coach, Coach Patino and I still remain close. I remember when they went to the Final Four, I was a junior in high school, and they we won the state championship, and they were being honored at the uh, they were being honored at the mayor's office, and our basketball team was in there with them, and I just was in awe. I'm like, wow, that's pretty awesome. They got to the Final Four, and now to find myself not at the Final Four, but in the situation, an opportunity presents itself to build a program to that. 
I was in awe, and today I'm still in awe, and every day I approach this is like this is my last day on the job, and uh, that's why I approach my every day. And one last thing, it's not just about the lifestyle change, the weight loss. If that weren't enough, back in January, you lost three games in a row, and then you had a house fire which forced you and your family to move into a hotel. What was that experience like for you and your family? Uh, everything that could go wrong was going wrong, but you know what? Tough times don't last, tough people do. And, you know, I've seen some tough things in my life, and that just was something else to overcome. I, I'm, I was more concerned with my wife and children. We were able to persevere through that. It actually brought us closer. It gave our team, it, it gave me a different perspective. I told guys, hey, I'm worried about losing these three games. I'm just fortunate to have my kids and wife through this fire. Uh, we're not back in the home yet. we got about 10 or 11 more days. I, I, I know all of our contractors are listening, so, hey, let's get it moving. I need my tub back. You know, <laughs> so uh, it's been great. It, it's been great from a perspective of I'll appreciate our home even more now after being in that hotel room for the last two months. Yeah, I'm going to ask you one last thing because you've mentioned your kids and your family so many times. I think I could address this of any high achiever, anybody who works long, long hours. How how are you able to go home and then stay present for your kids and make sure that you're not beaten down by the grind, you're not thinking about the game, you're not thinking about that practice, but you're there and you're present for your family? How challenging is that? As you know, you get, you can't bring your job home, and it's really hard in our business. It's just like it is in yours, and you got to try to have that balance. And it's the most difficult thing when you're in college athletics, any type of athletics or entertainment, not to do that. So we have our Jeopardy night. We like watching Family Feud. We'll go to the movies. We'll watch a movie. The kids come with us to games. Uh, if we, you know, if we go on a road trip, my kids will be with me this weekend when we head to Creighton to face McDermott and, and his crew. A tough, tough game. So anytime I have an opportunity, I love being dad. I love being a husband, and I love being in the home. All right, so in terms of family feud, who's your family like? Are you guys a Steve Harvey family? Are you the guy from Seinfeld or that guy from Home Improvement? I like Steve Harvey a lot. Uh, my man from Seinfeld is a Providence College grad, so, you know, you got to have a little loyalty to the family, right? But I, I, I love it. And, and some of the, you know, we, we have our own. We have the Cooley feud, and, you know, we never get anyone right, so we, nobody ever wins. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Harvey nails that thing. He is really, really good at that. And Very I'm so talented. glad. I'm glad we finished this thing. I knew we would finish what we started. Great job. Good luck in the conference tournament. I will look for you in the NCAA tournament, too. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm a big, big fan, and thanks for the opportunity. To and it was great. You. I appreciate you saying that. I really do. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for listening, and great to have you on the show.